Hey everybody, it's Alex who's with the North Pacific Homes Group here in Victoria and I wanted to do a redo of a video we did not too long ago about buying into a Strata. So first off, please give this video a like and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel as it really helps us out a bunch. So of course, buying into a Strata is quite different than buying into a single family detached. Uh, essentially, you'll be buying into, a, you can think of it as a community. You are going to be collectively responsible with the other Strata members uh, for all of the common property. Uh, common property you can think of is everything that would be outside of your unit, such as, you know, the roof, the exterior, the parking, any of the grounds, uh, anything like that uh, is a common responsibility. Uh, so the first thing that when you're looking at a Strata is, is it going to be professionally managed or is it a self-managed Strata? Uh, the rule of thumb, quite honestly, is, is to look at more of a professionally managed strata uh, as they do adhere to certain regulations when you do have a self-managed strata. And that's not to say that every self-managed strata is done poorly. We know tons of great self-managed stratas, uh, but sometimes things can get missed because they don't have that property manager that is licensed through BCFSA kind of watching over and making sure all the documents are put into place. With Estrada are gonna be a strata council as well. And these are members that are generally voted on, a strata president, a treasury, the council members. And they're gonna be making sure that they're meeting regularly with a special general meeting or an annual general meeting, going over all the documents that are associated with the strata and, and doing votes on, on certain items. Now with every strata, uh, there's gonna be bylaws as well. So the province of BC has a standard set of bylaws and from there the strata can make certain adjustments to them for what they want. So they can keep this as regular bylaws or make a different rules and regulations. Now what we're looking for here is are there any restrictions that might hurt your use of the property? So the most common of course is pets, right? If you have a big dog, there might be a size restriction or a number restriction, right? You might only have one and you've got two dogs or one and one, one dog, one cat. Um, we did a video about Bill 44 uh, earlier on in this year, but there were restrictions for ages, you know, 55 plus uh, or rental restrictions. Bill 44 has gotten rid of all of rental restrictions except Airbnb, so 30 day minimums, uh, and you can only have 55 plus now. So there were some buildings that had, you know, a 19 plus building, uh, 45 plus building, or absolutely no rentals. Again, negated because of Bill 44, uh, but we just wanna make sure we're going through the bylaws and, and making sure that your use of the property won't be affected by any of the bylaws that are in there. The other thing that we're gonna be looking at is our, what are the strata fees? So the strata fees are our monthly fee that's paid to the strata and we wanna be going through the documents and making sure we know what those strata fees are going towards. It could be going towards you know, the insurance premiums, uh, it could be going towards contribution to the contingency reserve fund and operating fund, uh, which I'll, I'll discuss a little bit further. Uh, sewer, water, garbage, we just wanna make sure we know what these numbers are being allocated to and are they a, an average number compared to other units? If it's very high, uh, you know, we could think that maybe something's coming down the line that they're trying to save up for. Again, we'll discuss further on. Another thing that we're looking for is the leaky condos. So again, not every single condo has had these issues. Uh, what this was is during that time, building codes were a little bit different and unfortunately, not a lot of consideration was done on water egress. So essentially water was getting into these buildings and didn't have a way for it to get out. So causing a massive water damage mold, having to completely strip down their building and re-remediate it, which it gets very costly. Now just so you're aware, uh, with these new building codes, what buildings have now is just a little bit of a gap, what they call rain screen. So if water gets in, it can actually trickle down at the bottom, which we call weeping and then out. So making sure that that airflow is coming in so no water is sitting. With this leaky condo, what we wanna be looking at is the insurance history of the building. So if you recall in a video we did a couple of years ago, back at the beginning of 2020, we had a massive strata insurance issue. Uh, where a lot of North American companies were bought by international conglomerates like Lloyd's over London, for example, uh, and they started to target high-risk buildings all across North America. Now for us in the Lower Mainland and the island, high risk is water. So if you have a building that's had water claims in the past, your premiums were going up anywhere between two to as high as 600%. So again, we just wanna make sure we're going through the documents and, and ensuring we know what we're walking into, which leads me to my next point. When we're going to write an offer, a very crucial step or a subject we can think of is the reviewing of the strata documents. Now there's a couple of main documents we wanna go through, but in essence, all these documents are gonna show what the history of the building is gonna be. And so we've gotten a very good understanding of what we're walking into. You can flip this over to the lawyer to the review, or there are companies here in Victoria that will review them for you and give you a summary page. One document we're gonna be reviewing is the Form B. And essentially this document is a snapshot you can think of of how the unit is operating along with the strata. So it's gonna show you exactly what your monthly fees are, 
What's in the contingency reserve fund? Are there any owed fees to the strata that hasn't been paid for by the unit? Do you have any special levies coming up? And I'll explain what a special levy is in just a moment uh, that have been voted on and approved. Uh, do you have any parking or storage allocated to the unit? So a really good, pretty much one or two page summary of exactly what's going on. Another crucial document is called the depreciation report. Now this document is hired on, it should be done between every six or seven years and it's a third party engineering firm coming in and reviewing all of the assets of the building. Now the assets of a building are something that can be replaced. So essentially you're looking at the roof, the windows, balconies, uh, parking membrane, for example, elevators, all of these things, what they're gonna do is they're gonna assess them. They're gonna see how long of a life they have left on them and how much that cost is gonna be at the end of their life to replace. And what this document is gonna do is gonna show you kind of a schedule of what your costs are gonna be over the next 30, 40 years, uh, what special levies you might have, and they're gonna come up with three funding models. So uh, essentially you're gonna have, you know, light strata fees and, and heavier special levies, medium strata fees and then less special levies and, and heavy strata fees and hopefully no special levies. And what a special levy is, is if there is uh, not enough money in the contingency reserve fund or the operating fund and quickly to go over those two, you can think of the operating fund as a checking account for the building uh, and the contingency reserve fund as the savings account for the building. And so if there's not enough money to cover these expenses, each unit will be hit with a special levy in order to get these done. Again, it's all gonna be determining on, on how the unit is operating and going through not only the form B, the depreciation port, and the meeting minutes. That's, those are other crucial, crucial documents that we're gonna to need to be going through. And essentially, you know, sounds kind of self-explanatory. These meeting minutes are gonna be a history of what the council has been doing, what they've been voting on. Have there been any disputes between the units, right? Is, is one unit being very loud? Is there an, an odor coming from it? Who knows? But we wanna get, again, an understanding as to what the building is, is operating like and how the council and how the unit members are actually responding to it. Because uh, I've heard nightmare stories of, of units or, or buildings, I should say, that are not correcting things as they should, and they get hit with a, a hundred plus thousand dollar special levy per unit uh, in order to cover these costs. Now, all this isn't meant to freak you out. There are tons of great buildings that are well looked after, and at the end of the day, buildings do degrade over time. Again, just like a house, you have to do maintenance and you have to fix things as long as we just understand what we're walking into and making sure that this council is being effective and is fixing things on a timely basis then we really have nothing to worry about. And that's a very short synopsis of buying into a strata. I hope you guys really liked this, uh, this video. And as always, please never hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much.